So why would min hash work? Remember that our goal is to find a hash function h such that if the similarity of c1 and c2 is high, then a high probability we have that the hash value of c1 is equal to the hash value of c2. And if it's the opposite, that is, if the similarity of c1 and c2 is low, then with high probability, the hash value of c1 is not equal to the hash value of c2. So this is basically equivalent to saying that if we choose a random permutation pi, then the probability that the hash value of c1 and c2 are identical is equal to the Jacquard similarity of c1 and c2. So why is this true? And here comes the most difficult part of this lecture, which is to prove that this claim is actually true. So let's look at an example. Let's say that we have already chosen a permutation pi. And this, this column is actually the permutative version of C1. And this is a permutative version of C2. And correspondingly, this is a permutative version of C1 union C2. So let's say that y is a shingle and pi of y is actually um, the hash value of C1 union C2. So in this example, in this example, basically this is free because we can see that the third row is actually the first row that this column is mapped to one. Then if the hash value of C1 union C2 is free, then either one of these statements is true. Either the hash value of C1 is free or the hash value of C2 is free. And both of these two statements are true only if this shingle Y is actually in the intersection of C1 and C2. And in this case, in this example, that happens to be the case. So that basically means that the probability that both statements are true is actually equal to the probability that this shingle Y is in this intersection of C1 and C2. So what is the probability that this shingle Y is actually in the intersection of C1 and C2? It is the Jacquard similarity. So basically we have already completed the proof in saying that the probability that the hash value of C1 and C2 is equal is actually equal to the Jacquard similarity of C1 and C2. Now, if until now you're still not convinced, this is a time when you can pause the video for five minutes and try to digest it. So we all know that the probability that the hash value of C1 equals the hash value of C2 is actually equal to the Jacquard similarity of C1 and C2. Now we can generalize to actually multiple hash functions and the similarity of the two signatures is the fraction of the hash functions in which they agree. But note that because of the min hash property, the similarity of columns is actually the same as the expected similarity of their signatures. So this actually holds. For example, let's say that we are given an input matrix and we have transformed it into a signature matrix. And let's focus on column one and column three. That's document one and document three. And the similarity between document one and document three, if we see it in terms of Jacquard similarity, it would be 0 0.75. But if we look at the signature of the first column and the third column, only the first column and the third column are the same. So basically the similarity in terms of the signature is actually 0 0.67. So they're actually quite close to each other. And um, to summarize, given a document, what mean has does is that for example, it will pick 100 random permutations of the rows. And the signature of this document is actually just a 100 dimensional column vector. And note that this sketch, or well, the signature of this document is actually very small because we're storing each entry 
of the signature as integers. So basically it's just 100 bytes. Now we have achieved our goal. We have compressed a long bit vectors into short signatures. But one problem of directly using min hash is that commuting rules sometimes can, even once, can be computationally prohibited. For example, if we would have 1 million rows or 1 billion rows, then simply storing the permutation vectors that long would be very, very difficult. And one idea to solve this problem is row hashing. Basically, the idea is to, for example, pick 100 hash functions, ki, and ordering under that hash function actually gives a random row permutation. More concretely, again, let's look at this example where we have this input matrix. And originally, we will have this permutation vector that we use to permute the input matrix. Now, instead of storing this permutation vector, we can generate it on the fly. For example, we can first choose a random hash function, and then we will hash the original row index one, two, three, all the way to seven. And we hash them to some other value. So the difference between generating a permutation vector and using the hash function is that we can, using the hash function, we can actually generate these entries on the fly one by one. Therefore, we, we no longer need to store the permutations. And therefore, we have a one pass implementation of the algorithm. For example, let's say that we're given two documents represented by two columns, C1 and C2. And let's say that we have two hash functions, H of X and G of X. How are we gonna use the min hash to generate the signature matrix? We will first check the row one, which is here. And we will just hash the original row index of the first row, which is one, into one and three using these two hash functions. And we'll go back to check the first row of C1 and C2. And since only C1 has a one here, we only need to update the signature of C1. And since one and three is definitely smaller than infinity, we will just update it to be one and three. And then we will go through to the second row. Again, we will just first hash the original row index two using these two hash functions. And we, map, and we will hash it to two and zero. And we'll go back to the second row to check C1 and C2. Since only C2 has a one here, so in this time, we only need to update the signature for C2. And we compare this two zero with the two infinity here, and we find that two zero is actually smaller. Therefore, we'll update this two infinity into two and zero. And the third round, we will check the third row. We're doing, we will be doing the same thing. We'll just hash the original row index, the third row. We will hash the three into three and two, and then we'll go back to the third row to check C1 and C2. And this time both C1 and C2 has one. That basically says that we will potentially need to update both the signatures of the C1 and C2. And we check that which one is smaller. Let's say that for, for C1, three is actually larger than one. Therefore we don't need to update this one here. And two is actually smaller than three. Therefore we need to update this three into a two here. For the signature of C2, since three two is actually larger than two zero, we don't need to do anything. And we will perform similar steps for the fourth row and the fifth row and get the final signature here. 